Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathy Super Sessions by Dr. Chakos. Today we'll be, we'll, we'll be doing the fourth chapter of Ortega, what some of the great homeopaths have thought about the myasms. This chapter will tell us about the evaluation of the myasm in the present investigation and the myasm as the constitutional sickness. Many authors of today and yesterday have discussed the doctrine of myasm. So many authors have described, have described the myasms. Each one has their own concept. So let us see the few definitions or the doctrine of myasms given, given by different authors. Dr. J. Grosso of Argentina, referring to the myasm theory states, this is an important matter which we have not always succeeded in resolving satisfactorily. So this is very correct what he writes because everybody's concept is different. It may cause confusion. So that is why he said that it is an important matter which we have not always succeeding in resolving satisfactorily. When we say myasms, we mean the cause, the etiology of the acute and the chronic disease. So he says that whenever we think about the word myasm, we have to know what is the cause of the disease in homeopathy or what is the etiology of the acute and the chronic diseases. Thus, we talk about a soric psychotic asthmatic syndrome or a psychotic osteoplastic mental change. So, therefore, whatever symptoms are there, each symptom can be described to a particular mindset. So, when we analyze the symptoms of an asthmatic syndrome, it could be a soric psychotic train or a psychotic or a syphilitic mental change or the mental symptoms may be either a syphilitic or psychotic in nature. Grosso attributed myasms to alteration of the vibratory rhythm in this way pro proceeding from a dynamic concept of the illness. So Grosso he said that it is a nothing but an alteration of the vibratory rhythm. As you all know that Life, health, disease, cure, recovery is never a straight line. It always moves in an upward and downward direction. That means what? It has got a particular rhythm. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Or it's got a vibratory rhythm. So he has attributed the myasms to the alteration of the vibratory rhythm. So when the vibratory rhythm is disturbed, it, it, is, it gets disturbed from the dynamic plane and the illness will come. So health also, whenever there is health, the vibratory rhythm is in resonance with all the physiological processes going on in the body, as a result of which health is maintained. When this vibratory rhythm is altered because of some exciting cause or some maintaining cause, then it will cause an illness or the vibratory rhythm will be disturbed and the vital force will get deviated and the dynamic concept of illness will come inside. The patient suffers an alteration of the vital rhythm, which terminates in the form formation of one or another lesion as an epiphenomenon. So whenever the disturbance in the alteration of the vital rhythm takes place, it will terminate in, in some form or one or the other lesion as an epiphenomenon. Vinovsky, also an Argentinian, discussing the constitution in his Homeopathica 1955. So Vinovsky says, we should emphasize that the notions of the myasm, which while somewhat related to the concept of constitution or involved, or involved in this concept. It really means the grouping and classification of a large number of signs and symptoms, thus giving a precise idea about the morbid, morbid tendency or susceptibility. So Vinovsky states that, we should emphasize the notion of the myasms, which are related to the constitution of the individual. So it meaning mean, meanings what? You have to classify whatever the constitution will, co will comprise of what? The mental level and as well as the physical level or the mental symptoms as well as the physical symptoms. So whatever symptoms are there, we have to group it and we have to classify it and this will give us a precise idea about the morbid, meaning the abnormal tendency or the abnormal susceptibility of an individual. We can say that the patient presents two or three known myasms or that one of them clearly predominates. So, Winovsky says that we can, in a patient, there may be more than one myasm, say two or three, or there may be just out of these two or three, 
one will be more predominant than the other. But this sort of diagnosis is not the same thing as initially the patient or the medical. So what he says, when you diagnose a disease in the form of demyism, it is not the same thing as initializing the patient. It only gives a general orientation in the sense of bringing out his underlying morbid idiosyncrasy. So it only gives a general orientation of the sense of bringing out his underlying morbid idiosyncrasy. So the, whenever we classify or whenever we analyze, whenever we evaluate the symptoms and find out its miasmatic interpretation, it will tell us the abnormal idiosyncrasy of, of the patient towards the disease. Another Argentinian, Horacio L. Rox, stated in 1955, chronic disease is the normal state of existence to which the organism has become adapted in order to survive by finding a new tolerable metabolism, ensuring elimination of toxins and safeguarding as well it can the more or less efficient role of the noble organs. So he says that the chronic disease is there whatever normal state of existence is there, the body becomes adapted to the new metabolism, which helps in eliminating the toxins of the body, which will help in safeguarding the health of the individual. And also it will help in maintaining the function of the noble or the important organs. Any alteration in these readapted functions will give rise to a new imbalance, which must be, which which um, uh, be much more difficult and complex to repair than the preceding one, as there will be a few elements available in the less vital energy to direct. So when this alteration from a health goes into a disease state, naturally the functions of the body are readapted to the pathological condition, as a result of which a new imbalance is there, which is more difficult to repair than the previous one. And the vital energy also will be more weakened and there may be few signs and symptoms to prescribe. Dr. C. A. Gutierrez tells us, chronic disease is a modification of the vital dynamism leading to the creation of a special state called susceptibility. So it is nothing, so according to Dr. C. A. Gutierrez, he says that it is a modification of the vital dynamic process of the body and this is called the state of susceptibility. So he is equating susceptibility with the mice. When we neutralize the state, we cause it to lose its essential modality that is driving force. In the patient, we should recognize two perfectly defined facets. So when we neutralize the state or the modalities, we have to find two distinct points. One, one on one hand, the illness, which is the only vital dynamism neutralized or denatured by something which produces a pure modification, giving rise to susceptibility and which Hanneman calls the myism. So one in short, it is the illness in which the susceptibility gets modified and which Hanneman calls it the word myism. And on the other hand, the human being in his environment, which colored by a series of modalities permits us to, to catalog the case of the sickness. And on the other hand, we are getting the pathological processes along with its series of modalities. Color by model mean we have many, many modalities of the pathological conditions, as a result of which we can be able to classify the disease in a more correct manner. Nicholas M. Sincenia defines the myism as a fundamental constitutional pathological state of the individual. So myism, according to Nicholas M. Sincenia, is nothing but the fundamental constitutional pathological state of the individual. Fundamental means the basic, constitutional means the mental and the physical makeup, pathologic means the abnormal condition of the pathology or the state of the individual. So it is quite complete the definition of the fundamental constitutional pathological state of the individual. So the pathological state naturally will correlate with the mass. This entire psychophysical constitution of the patient is altered. So he says that what? The full constitutional patient, including the mental and the physical, is altered. So, so the psychophysical constitution is altered. The organism is predisposed to certain specific illness. So as a result of which, what happens? The individual or the organism gets predisposed to a certain specific illness. To various, to various perturbations 
with their own character and modality. So each symptom will have its own character, its own sensation with the modalities. And this individuality, distinct in every case, is the basic of homeopathic treatment. So when you get a full symptom with respect to location, sensation, modality, and concomitant on the mental level and the physical level, and you treat the patient as a whole, it will give you its individualistic characteristic feature on which the homeopathic treatment is based on. The Argentine master, Tomas P. Pascherio, tells us, homeopathy views the constitution as a pathogenetic dynamism, which the individual inherits and modifies during his life in three distinct directions, inflammation, destruction of tissue, or its proliferation. So, Tomas Palbo Pascherio, Argentinian physician, he says that, according to the homeopathic point of view, it is nothing but the pathogenism, nothing but the patho pathogenetic dynamism which the individual inherits. So the myasms are inherited and are mainly inherited, and later on they get modified during its lifetime. So during life processes they are inherited, but as the as the time goes by they get modified, and into three distinct directions. So that is inflammation. That is sora destruction of tissue that is cephalate and proliferation that is psychotic. These dynamic morbid tendencies were called by Hanneman myasms, a term comparable to diathesis, dyscrasia, terrain, constitution, and he gave them the name sora, syphilis, and psychosis. So Thomas Pascherio says that sora, syphilis, and psychosis is the name given by Dr. Hanneman for the myasms and and the other synonyms can also be compared to the word diathesis, dyscrasia, terrain, or constitution. The Hanimanic concept of a, of a dynamic diathesis reduced to sora, syphilis, and psychosis is the only approach which enables us to understand the grouping into a common entity or distinct phenomena which we can sometimes alternate with each other. So he says that the Hanimanian grouping of the myosin into these three main groups of sora, syphilis, and psychosis will help us to understand or group them into a specific group of sora, syphilis, and psychosis, or sometimes even the myosin sora, syphilis, syphilis, psychosis, they may also alternate with each other. References to the myosins are encountered in writings of various authors. So let us see the references of the myosins with the writings of various authors. Granium, in his homeopathic lexicon, follows the initial ex exposition of Hanneman and simply characterizes them as an as inhamations or effluvia, that is, tiny volatile particles which cannot be recognized by any instrument, but to which the human organism is susceptible. He associates them with the nature of our medicines in calling the latter myosmatic. So Granier says that he characterizes them as an as an emanations or an effluvia, efflu that was something which comes out from the body. That is what tiny particles which cannot be identified by any instrument. But the human organism or the robust constitution is susceptible to these tiny water volatile particles known as emanations or effluvia. And they, and they uh, can be associated with the nature of medicines and calling them miasmatic. So whatever these symptoms are there, according to the mass at the background, they can be matched with the nature of our medicines depending upon the mathematic activity of the medicines also. So suppose you have an expression in a disease condition of a soric, soric miasm, you have to have a drug having an antisoric symptoms also. So you have to match it on the symptom similarity. When sore symptoms are there, you have to match with the sore symptoms of the drug. You cannot give a drug having the psychotic symptoms. Conrad Medina, author of the book on homeopathy, thinks that Hanneman merely produced a philosophical hypothesis about the myosin. So Conrad Medina, another author, he says that Hanneman, he made a, a hypothesis, a philosophical hypothesis about the myosin. Henry Allen, professor at the Herring Medical College of Chicago, and a supreme master among the classical homeopaths, tells us at the beginning of his first chapter of his homeopathic medicine. Hanneman first announced that Sora is the cause of the basic element in everything known as sickness. So according to Henry Allen, a well-renowned professor 
at the Herring Medical Sh College of Chicago, he said that Hanneman first announced Sora as the basic cause of, of the elements of sickness. He says, as Henry Allen says, will anyone ask why a true homeopath must know this chronic myosin? So he asks us a question that, that uh, you have to ask a question that why a true homeopath must know about the chronic myosins? What is the importance of knowing the chronic myosins? What influence can it have if the physician always selects the most similar possible remedy? So what can be its influence if the physician will select the most possible similar remedy? Here, Alan adds, the last line is very appropriate if he always selects the most similar possible remedy. So again, he emphasizes the fact on the most similar possible remedy. The truth is that we cannot select the most similar possible remedy unless we understand the phenomena of the basic myasms in their existence and activity. The true simile is based on the fact whether or not we are aware of it. So he says that the most possible similar remedy can only be obtained if we know the knowledge of the basic myasms, their existence and their activity. So they have to be present in that individual and the activity is seen to the signs and symptoms. Then only if we match it, then only we can say it is a true simile based on the fact of the symptoms which we are seeing at the point in time. And whether we are we are aware, we, whether we are aware of it or we are not aware of it. He says that. So subconsciously, you may not be aware of it, but sorry, consciously, you may not be aware, aware it aware of it, but subconsciously you are matching the symptom similarity, the soric dimensions to the soric dimensions of the remedy also. The example we gave of the apparent mercurious patient who turned out to be calcarea shows how the physician, the true homeopath, perceives the underlying soric condition. So Alan says that in the previous chapter, if you see that when you've taken the case initially, you thought Merxol was the remedy of choice. But if you went deeper into the case, into the psychosomatic aspect of the patient also, you found out that Merxol is not the true remedy, but calcarea is there, which should be perceived as the true homeopath perceives the underlying soric condition. So calcarea was the remedy because you have to perceive the proper soric trait of the indication. He sees that the ultimate collection of symptoms which appear to correspond more with the third myosin syphilis actually has antecedents clearly reflected in the patient's general condition. So in this example, he had said that you're also getting, besides psoriac complaints, you're also getting the syphilitic symptoms also, which is seen in the patient's general condition. His constitutional mental state, his investigation, diagnosis, and the therapeutic indication terminate precisely with the idea of the miasmatic basis of the disease and he changes the prescription to calcarea. So we have to take the totality of the individual, the individual as a whole. So therefore, we are taking the constitution, as I told you, constitution is what? The mental and the physical state of the individual. Then his investigations, the diagnosis, the therapeutic indication, all of this will point out to be calcarea if you go into the depths of the case. Henry Allen quotes, Henry Allen quotes, the character of the miasm is the character of the disease or the form of the illness. So whatever character of the miasm is there, that will be the character of the disease. So the character of the disease will be, will be, will be reflected on what miasm is present. Herbert A. Roberts, whose principle and art of cure by homeopathy, 1936, advanced the hypothesis that Sora is the equivalent of the so-called deficiency disease. So Herbert A. Roberts was of the opinion that Sora is called the deficiency disease or there's some deficiency, some groove, some fault in the individual as a result of which there are deficiencies which he called it as the Soric myas. Let us end this chapter with the words of Professor Miguel D. Wensquisi Gonzalez. Ignorance of the Hanneman legacy has always led, led us to be led to an lamentable error. So if you ignore what Hanneman, or if you ignore the Hanemanian teaching of myism, it will be a great error which you will lament later on. Why? Because you will not get the result in your practice. So that's all. Please be tuned. And uh, 
the next chapter will be coming up chapter 5 will be coming up soon i hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much